Well, it's Katie. Welcome back to From Identity and welcome to a follow-up video. If you guys didn't see it, I did a couple days ago. I did a palette I didn't buy because I'm on YouTube video. I got the inspiration from Annette's Makeup Corner. She did a video just like it and she followed it up with a video or maybe she flipped the order around. I don't remember the way the order she uploaded them. But then she also had a video on the palette she did buy because she was on YouTube. So I really enjoyed watching her video and after seeing her do that, I was like, I want to do that too. So if you didn't see, I've already uploaded my palettes I didn't buy because I'm on YouTube. I'll have that linked up here if you want to go watch it. Um, when I, I felt very repetitive in that video, like the whole time I was just like, I didn't buy this because I didn't get it on a launch date and stuff like that. So hopefully in this video it'll be a little more entertaining to listen to. So anyway, if you want to go see it and see the palettes that I really wanted but didn't buy for various reasons, that is linked down below. But today we are going to talk about the palettes I did buy because I'm on YouTube. And I'm going to focus on palettes that if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably would have either passed on, maybe got it in a later date, whatever the case may be. That's what we're going to be talking about. So if you are at all interested in that, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so this is going in no particular order. I just kind of started keeping a note on my phone and added to it whenever I thought of a palette that was like, oh yeah, I bought that just because I had a YouTube channel. First one being the ABH Norvina palette. I guess I could show you guys, but honestly, I don't want to go ruffling around and find them all. So here's a picture um, of the palette. I do still have it, but I remember when it launched, I was like, ooh, that's pretty, but I enjoy playing with purples. I have purple on my eyes today, but honestly, I'm not crazy about purple. It's not my favorite color to work with. It's just, I don't know, it's pretty, but I like more grungy and deeper tones, and purple just isn't my vibe. I like it for when I'm wanting to go very elegant or more natural, because I feel like most purples are a little more neutral-ish, or they just look a little softer on the eyes. I guess that's the word I'm thinking of. I'm softer, so it's not so wha-bam in your face. So when I saw that palette, I was like, oh, you know, it's pretty. Got some purples that would make really pretty neutral purpley looks, but... Not for me, I'm not crazy about purples, but I did buy it because I'm on YouTube. And I wanted to see if me buying it on launch day, because I did buy it from the ABH website um, the day it launched, and seeing if I could get a video up fast enough, how it kind of helped or if it did anything for my channel. Um, and so that's basically the biggest reason why I bought it. Now, I'm not going to lie, it is a pretty palette. I mean, it, it was fine, but... Since reviewing it, I really haven't ever thought about it again. The color story is very muted, very neutral, and I think there's only like three purples really. Everything else is pretty soft and neutral, so yeah, that was a palette I bought exclusively because I am on YouTube. I could get it from the ABH website at a little discount because I am. I do have my cosmetology license, and so I could put that back into my channel and hopefully help with the views. And I feel like, I don't remember what how that video did, but I don't think it did anything crazy well because... I mean, there's ABH is so popular. When a new palette comes out, the mar the market, no, not the market, YouTube, like YouTube, uh, the beauty side of YouTube is just saturated with them. So I think I did that one, and maybe Riviera. I forget which one came out first. I think it was ABH Norvina, and then the Riviera. And then I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to be buying them if I don't really love the color story. And ever since then. I haven't loved a color story because the Riviera, I think it was the Riviera, is the last ABH palette I bought that I can remember. The next palette that I bought because I'm on YouTube is a Dominique Cosmetics Sweater Weather Collection. Now this is a palette that I bought totally completely because I am on YouTube. I took a poll on my Instagram and I think even maybe on YouTube, the, like the community tab, I can't remember, but I was like, hey, Dominique is coming out with this palette. Are you guys at all interested in seeing me swatch it, review it, that kind of thing? And I feel like it was overwhelmingly yes, or like majority yes. I forget what it was, but I just felt like, okay, there's a lot of interest, and it wasn't too crazy expensive. You got a little palette and then two lipsticks, and so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I want to do an eye swatch video, and I, again, it's kind of experimenting just to see how these videos do if I get it right on launch day, and since I happen to remember on launch day, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy it and get it, and I'll do an eye swatch video, and I did I did do that. Like, I think the day it came in, I sat down and did eye swatches, edited it, and then I think I uploaded the next day. I did a very quick turnaround and was one of the first videos out about the Sweater Weather palette, and... It didn't really do that good on views, I'll tell you that right now. It's doing better now, and I think it's because the collection has run its course, and so maybe they're on sale. I don't know. Within the last month, maybe two months, I've gotten a lot more views on that video, so it's kind of not even worth it in the end, because even though there's a lot of views, I still didn't make anywhere near the price of the palette, but at least I got it got decent traction for my little channel. So yeah, that was a palette that 
it was just too neutral and too purpley, mauvey, very soft toned for me to be like overwhelmingly excited about it. It was just a pretty palette, but if I wasn't on YouTube, I honestly wouldn't have even considered buying it because it was just so, so, so. Okay, the next palette is the Wet n Wild Rebel Rose Quad. Not really a palette, it's quad, but I put it in here because I saw that and I was kind of like, oh, that's pretty, and then I, I just kind of moved past it, but then I got a couple people asked, like, hey, have you tried it? What do you think? Hey, could you do a review on it? So I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll buy it. And so I bought it. Wasn't that expensive, so that was another reason. I was like, hey, you know, I'll try it. There is a green in there. Maybe it'll be really pretty, and I did do a first impressions video on that, which is up uh, on my channel. Maybe I'll try to link these videos down below if you guys are interested, but I did do a video, but it just was too deep. Like, I know I've told you guys I like the grunge, but everything in that palette was really dark, and the one matte, was it the one matte? Maybe the two matte. I don't know where it is right now. Oh, maybe it's right here. Yep. Okay, th so there was two mattes. There was a matte black. But then, you know, the other matte is this deep, dark red, and the other two shimmer. It just wasn't my color story. It was just too deep and too dark, and I just like more grungy, dirty vibes. Like, I, you guys know, I like the grungy greens, olive tones, mustards, that kind of thing um, when, I wanted, when I'm wanting to go deep. So that just wasn't anything that I would have been super interested in, but I bought it because someone asked. I was at Walgreens. It wasn't that expensive. So I was like, hey, shoot, I'll do a first impressions video, see how it does. Again, I don't think it did that good. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> the things you realize as you reflect over past videos. I feel like I'm always so busy. I never take time to look back. But anyway, um, so I did do that video, but it's a palette I never would have picked up if I didn't have a YouTube channel. Okay, next is the Lancome Starlight Palette. This is a palette that I thought was really pretty, but considering it's Lancome, a little higher price tag, um, and the very neutral leaning palette, I wasn't at all interested in it. Well, I shouldn't say at all interested, because there was something about it that I was, I thought was very pretty, but it's very neutral. But I was very interested and intrigued with Lancome and them coming out with a palette. I feel like they don't come out with big palettes often, and I want to say it was a relatively decent price, and I think maybe there was a sale when I bought it. I forget what the case was, but I put it out on Instagram. I was like, hey, are you at all interested? And I got a decent amount of people saying like, yes, I'd love to see your thoughts on it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So I did do a review, but before I did that, I did a eye swatching video. I don't think I did a first impressions, but I did an eye swatch video. Again, just wanting to fe get a feelers out to see how they do on my channel. They're not very popular on YouTube, but there's, their eye swatch videos I find are so informative. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's where I like swatch all of the colors on my eyes. I find those so informative and for me, like arm swatching is fun and pretty to see the color, but seeing it swatch on the eyes is so helpful for me to see how it performs. So anyway, I was wanting to get into that on my channel and I'm still going to do it here and there, but definitely on newer releases because I feel like this video, if I'm remembering correctly, didn't do well when I initially put it up. I think it's doing better now, but I mean, it has okay views. Again, nothing crazy. So anyway, that's basically the only reason I bought it is because I had requests and I was curious to see if maybe a higher end brand, a more newer release, a palette, you know, that kind of thing, if it would bring in a couple more views, more interest in that video. So yeah, that's that's definitely a palette that, while I think it's pretty, it's just a little too neutral and the shimmers I remember being very subdued for me and my personal preferences. Now with that said, the looks I created with that palette were very beautiful. Like I remember a couple videos um, that I did and I've gone back to watch to like get links for or whatever and I'm like, ooh, that's a pretty eye look. Like what was I wearing? Oh, it's a Lancome palette, okay. So I evidently do like it, but it just wasn't anything that really gripped my attention and I totally know if I wasn't on YouTube and wasn't at all interested in making a video, I wouldn't have ever purchased it. Next one would be the Stelazi Spellbound palette. This palette I bought because a couple people asked me on YouTube and honestly that was about it. I did receive some PR from uh, Stelazi Cosmetics. Uh, I, I can't remember if I said the, the brand name, but it's from Stelazi, their Spellbound palette. And I had received brushes from them in the past and so when that palette came out, I got a couple of people saying, hey, are you gonna you know review it? Are you going to share thoughts on it? I'd love to know if it's any good, you know, that kind of thing. And it was kind of sort of a dupe for the Urban Decay palette. So people were like, ooh, could you get that and skip on the Urban Decay, that type of thing. Um, I I don't really get Stelazi PR anymore so at the time I, I wasn't getting it so I was just kind of like oh okay well I'll buy it and then I'll try it and review it because while the color story is fun there's a couple of pops of colors that I like overall the palette didn't really intrigue me and grab my attention that much for me to want to buy it but I do try to when I'm able to you know do videos that you guys ask I can't always do it but in this case I forget I was making a purchase somewhere and I saw that they had Stelazi so I was like you know what 
I'll get the palette, let's review it, and you know, I'll share my thoughts on here. And I want to say I didn't I didn't do an eye swatches video, and I don't think I did a first impressions. I think I just shared my thoughts in a, a palette palooza video. So yeah, that was definitely a palette that if I wasn't on YouTube, never honestly probably never would have thought twice about buying it because the color story just doesn't grab my attention that much. Okay, this is a little different because it's not an eyeshadow palette, but it is a palette. But the Lorac Pro Conceal and Contour Palette. It was a cream conceal and contour palette. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this. Like, even shortly after I bought it, I was like, why did you buy that, Katie? You don't like cream contour. And thinking back, I think I was at, and I didn't really share it on my YouTube channel. I want to say I didn't even have a YouTube channel. So does this even count? But it's so funny, I have to share. I did it on my blog, and I wanted to do a blog post. And I think it was Lorac's next big thing. And I used to be such a Lorac fan. I love their palettes and whatnot. But when they came out with this conceal and like cream face palette, I was like, oh, like it's not a nice shop palette. Bummer. But then I was like, well, maybe I can still do a review and share it on my blog and maybe, you know, people will be interested. So I bought it. And to this day, I'm just like, why did you buy that, Katie? Like, why would you think that you could give input and advice and review a product that you don't enjoy using, even if it's the best formula? <laughs> like, but yeah, so that I'm going to keep that one short and sweet because it's not on YouTube. I just realized I'm pretty sure it was only when I was exclusively blogging, but I had to share because that is my biggest little goof of blogging. I feel like ever is that I bought a palette and was, you know, reviewed it. And I just, I hated the aspect of what the product was like I don't like cream contouring or cream highlighting or any I don't like cream anything liquid or powder that's it so <laughs> I just find that very funny okay a couple more and then we are done the lime crime venus 2 palette this is another palette that I have somewhere but um I have all these palettes I think I can't think of a palette I've gotten rid of. But anyway, this palette I bought because I'm on YouTube. I'm, yeah, I was on YouTube at the time. I bought because I, I was on YouTube. It was a new release from Lime Crime. I was very interested in Lime Crime at the time. And even though I wasn't super into reds, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get it and I'm going to review it and I'm going to share my thoughts on YouTube. And there was a little bit of interest. And another reason that kind of pushed me to buy it was that not a whole lot of people were featuring it or reviewing it or whatnot. And for me, as a tiny channel, I was like, you know what? That's a palette that I could get, I could review and hopefully have some valuable information and be you know worthwhile of seeking out and watching because when you review very popular palettes and you're a very small channel sometimes you're just you know it's just a vast sea of all these other channels that are more popular so people tend to click on who they know whereas if there's not a whole lot of people out there reviewing it then there's a little more chance of being discovered by people because they're searching for reviews. Does that make sense? This is how my mind works, at least. Anyway, so that's why I bought it, because if you look at the palette, well, I think the outside is gorgeous. It's very pretty. The reds inside really aren't me. I'm not into the red. That's another color that I'm just like, no, no, thank you. I don't like, I mean, they're pretty. They're fun to play with every now and then, but I'm not super into the reds when it comes to, um, you know, on my eyes and whatnot. So that was another palette that if I wasn't on YouTube, I wouldn't have bought it. Honestly, if I wasn't on YouTube, I might have bought the second palette that they came out with, the second big one, because it was a little more green leaning, even though I didn't buy it because it wasn't that green. Like the outside was way more green than the inside. And that one was such a disappointment. Does anyone remember that? Was that limited edition? I don't think anyone talks about that palette anymore. But anyway, getting off on a tangent here. Yeah, Lime Crime Venus 2, definitely a palette I bought just because I'm on YouTube. Okay, and last up, the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice Palette. This is a palette again. While I do or did, in a sense, kind of collect the Too Faced little, the little big, the Too Faced Tin Palettes, um, I wasn't going to buy this one because it was just so neutral, boring, repetitive to what I had. Here it is right here. Um, still smells great, by the way. <laughs> I just got a good whip of it. It's just very neutral, and I felt like repetitive amongst their other palettes in their collection, and really the only kind of standout, something unique about it was kind of these, this red, maybe the purple, but it, honestly, I feel like you have purple mattes in their other palettes, but the red and the orange, I feel like were the most, oh, am I even in frame, were the most interesting out of this palette, but I bought it because I didn't want to do eye swatches, which I did do eye swatches of, and I wanted to review it on my channel, and once again, I don't think that video did very well. Am I learning that I shouldn't do eye swatches? Let me know. Do you guys like eye swatches? 
I, I still plan to do it. Now they're very time consuming, so I feel like I can't do it to the extent that I wish I could, but I do plan in future if I can get on top of a very recent l release to do eye swatches for that palette if it's a, like of interest to people, if people seem interested in it. But I don't plan to do it for older releases just because it's very time consuming and they don't get good views and it's a lot of work oh my gosh and very painful but anyway getting back to the topic at hand that is why i purchased this i have one two three four five other palettes in their collection i like them they're fine um they're not colorful and fun enough for me now but at the time they were so that's why i bought it but in hindsight i don't think i would have bought it because it's just not that me anymore. I definitely, definitely not now, but I feel like even then it was just kind of like, hmm, I, I know I wouldn't have bought it when it first came out. And I probably, maybe, if it was on sale, might have bought it, but I feel like I probably would have passed on it. All right, so there you have it. Those are all the palettes that I ended up buying pretty much only because I have a YouTube channel or a vlog and I wanted to share it with you guys. So let me know what you guys think down below. I know I've gotten some feedback or heard some people say like it's kind of silly to determine what you buy and what you review around your YouTube channel or like to not buy something because you have a YouTube channel but I find that that's just kind of helps me sort out through all the releases and all the stuff that's out there is just kind of keep a tabs of like hey is this is this interest is this of interest to people who want to watch my channel that kind of thing and these stood out to me to be palettes that if I didn't have a channel I really wouldn't have been that interested in I mean I still like them enough to keep them I still have good memories of them and like I said like there were a couple that I still thought you know thinking back to the looks that I did of them they were very pretty but they just weren't me and I definitely wouldn't have bought any of them first off because for me to buy all of them right when they launched I paid pretty much full price on almost all of them and I'm definitely that girl that if it doesn't immediately grab my attention or honestly if I didn't have a YouTube channel I know I'm not the girl who would buy it on launch day I would wait for a sale and buy it then because if you don't have a YouTube channel there's really no rush and I like to get a deal so yeah there are definitely pretty much all of my collection I would have waited and got it at, at a discounted price if I wasn't trying to get it on launch day in order to turn around and make a video in a timely manner. So I just thought it was an interesting video idea, something different and just a way to sit back and chat about some palettes and revisit the palettes in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below and on your way out if you want to give this video a thumbs up that would really help me out and I would so appreciate it. But thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch another one of my videos. I appreciate it so very much. You guys are just so sweet and supportive in the comments. I love chatting with you guys down there and it just warms my heart that even though I feel like some days I'm so kind of sporadic and out of it <laughs> trying to sit down and record in the little hour window that I have when the kids are napping, you guys are still so okay with me sometimes being very out of it or having the kids present. I just want to say thank you so very much for always being supportive even through the crazy seasons of life. But yeah, with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, I didn't say, but Annette's videos will be linked down below as well as your channel. Highly recommend her. Love Annette. But yes, with all that said, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye guys.